Okay, all right. Let's welcome Alistair Johnson. Right. Okay, well, uh, thank you very much uh, for attending, everyone. Um, today's talk, uh, late on Friday, we're going to be talking about uh, law checking. Uh, won't actually be covering free. That was just a, a bit of a, uh, of a title. Um, just to fill you in on who I am, because on uh, GitHub, my name is actually Benny Hill for some strange reason. Uh, I've done quite a few uh, contributions to the type level projects and to uh, Scala JS, uh, so mainly on the cross uh, compilation uh, area. That's where things like the, the laws uh, pop in. Uh, I've done a, a, a big library called Catalysts, which is really a, a, a summary of all the work that we've done on, on quite a few of the, uh, the type level uh, projects. Okay, so I'm going to kick off with just a recap, and my apologies, this has come, come up a few times today already, but we'll, we'll, we'll quickly go through it. Uh, we're aware from uh, algebra that we have various properties that uh, operators going to have, such as associative uh, and the like. We then define laws that we say that things must obey if we want to say something is, uh, say, uh, an addition or a, a multiplication. The, the, these things you know already, it's come up a few times already. Uh, moving on from there, we've got certain algebraic structures that also define that we, we need the binary operations to be associative, for example. And a very, very common one uh, is the semigroup that we find in Katz kernel. Uh, that's used a lot for the map reduce. Um, this is an interesting one that the addition of floating point numbers is not associative. And that, that covers doubles. So if you're using a double, and this is going back to 1991, if you're using a double, uh, if you create an instance of a type class from double, it won't be associative, um, unfortunately. And moving on there, the, the, the category theory equivalent is the semigroupal, also has uh, an associative uh, operator, uh, not technically, uh, it's, it's done by isomorphisms. The point here is that virtually every single cat's type class actually extends from semigroupal. And if semigroupal is not associative, that means all of your type classes, if you use double, won't, be, uh, won't obey the laws. So that's one of the examples that we're going to look at. Um, why, why, why make these tests? Quite often your, your tests pass. Um, why, why, why add the laws as well? Well, really and truly, your code can exploit these laws. Or, you know, in MapReduce, you can uh, not worry about the order, for example, if it's a commutative uh, semi-group. Type class designers can exploit these laws. And originally, the, the computer scientists, if you look at the original definitions of, of a monad and monoid, the actual laws that they defined are different to the ones that the, uh, when we see the, uh, the flat map. So if, if your laws, sorry, if your uh, type class does not obey the laws, and someone else thinks it does, you've got bugs waiting to happen. Your tests might pass today, and that's fine, but you, you don't know when they're going to break in the future. Um, so yeah, they might pass today, but who knows. So how, how do we um, test these things? Scala check, I'm sure you're all already aware of. It's a probability uh, testing framework um, that we can randomly generate um, some values um, to see if it, it, they uh, hold for, for, for all, um, all values. I know, just a point here, we've got Isabel that Lars is good at, we've got dependent types, Idris, maybe one day, but for the time being we can't use any special proofs, we can only mimic a proof by trying to make it fail using Scala checks to random values. But it's not bad, it's still pretty good. Discipline is something that we, certainly in CATS, uh, CATS IO, that's the framework we use to actually define the laws. It's actually a very small library. A lot of people say, well, why do you use discipline? Why don't you use Scala check? But in actual fact, all discipline is a, is a very thin layer uh, on top of Scala check. I had a quick look at the code. It, it's actually 100 lines, just under 100 lines. Uh, I think Lars has actually put in more comments than actual code. Um, so what does it do? Um, basically, it defines some rule sets that you can re reuse. So rather than just having some uh, general Scala check properties, they're named so you can reuse them as and where. 
more importantly, they, they have a parent and multiple basis. So if you've got a, a hierarchy of uh, some laws that depend on more than one thing, you don't want to have the, the tests redone many times. And that's something that discipline uh, will sort out. And it defines a check all property. So you, you run and check all, and it will run all the individual properties. And all it really is, is just a container, uh, a, a collection of Scala check properties. Um, and that's actually just what I said. One of the nice things is that we can split the definition of the law to the actual implementation. Uh, and we're supporting Scala, te Scala test and specs two out of the bo box. So I'll just give an example from the semi group because it's, it's quite an easy one. This is pseudo code, by the way. There's some imports missing, but the, the original code that's available will we'll have them. So we can see here that we, we've got the laws, and we're saying that semi group is an associative, uh, it's got a, an is equal instance, and we're just saying that the combine x, y is the same as the combine y, z. Uh, there's also one extra function, uh, the repeat one, and that, uh, it's, a, it's a small point, but you have to remember the, the laws, as well as checking uh, things like associativity, they're also testing the general type class that you're implementing. So they're a com kind of a combination between uh, a test harness and actually doing some, uh, some proofs that you might want to do later on at, at, at compile time uh, in, in more elaborate uh, frameworks. And here we have the actual uh, implementation. Again, it's a bit of a pseudocode. So we can see there, there's no mention of Scala test and specs too. Uh, you, you can use either. Uh, it doesn't depend uh, on either of them. Uh, and here we, see, we, we can see that we've got a rule set. It's got a name of a semi-group, and it's got two named uh, or some maps of some actual properties using the, the familiar Scala check for rule. It's also a clue of what we have to provide. So if you've got a, a, a type class instance that you want to, uh, to, to implement, wh what do we have to do to get these laws uh, to work? Well, we can see there's, there's two, two implicits. There's an arbitrary and an EQ. Uh, so basically, as well as the, the actual type class implementation, that's really just saying you, you've got to provide a way to generate some values. And you've got to find a way of, of uh, equating them with the equality. Um, and that, in a nutshell, is what the laws are about. Um, how, uh, in, in, in. Here are some examples of some pre-done law, law libraries. There's probably many more, but the cat's kernel, cat's itself, free I've mentioned, cat's effect, spire, uh, the maths library, which I uh, we'll come back in a minute. More interesting is an unlawful libraries that are available. Um, Alley Cats is the, the main one that I know of. So in Alley Cats, it, it's a cats uh, library. And they do have laws, but they are aware that in certain occasions, certain instances, the laws will fail. So they weren't sure what do we do. Do we just not have any laws? or put them in knowing that they're not actually 100%. So they, they put them in the Alley Cats library, and there's actually quite a, a few useful things in there. So if you're not sure of Alley Cats, do have a look. The other point is that many real libraries are in fact unlawful, but it doesn't mean to say that they're not correct for their particular usage. So I think you've got to uh, make the differentiation between writing a library that you're going to give to the whole world to use and something that you might be using in-house. And if you're using it in-house, it might technically be unlawful, but still give you the results that you want. Um, so don't be afraid to use discipline in your own projects. Just because you're not going to give it out to the whole world doesn't mean to say you can't use it. Uh, and, and in fact, you can just use it. Say you're just having a, an int instance, you can just use it. Uh, just to implement that one test that you're interested in. What discipline's great for, it gives a really clean structure on how you write your tests and laws. It's just a useful library. Right, the main uh, point of the talk is how do we actually get this stuff set up? So you want to use, say, something from CATS, and where do you start? 
how do you actually use the uh, the laws? That's a reference to the uh, the document that's actually available on the the doc uh, the uh, the cats web documentation, and it's pretty good. It, it it covers pretty much everything that I'm doing so far. Um, the examples I've given for the how to add the sets uh, the settings. The syntax there actually comes from the SBT Catalysts, which is another type level project. It's probably not one that you, you're aware of. It's one that CATS, I think, will be moving to uh, soon. It's just a convenient way of, 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 of doing some boilerplate. Bottom line is, though, if we want to use the CAT laws, we have to add it to the, the, uh, the, the test library that we're interested in. Uh, and, and the next thing I, I would recommend is there's a lot of repetitive code. It's always good to create your own test suite uh, class. You can derive it from, from CAT's test kit or on the Catalyst Scala test, for example. It just cuts down on the boilerplate for you. So here's an example of a test suite. We have basically just a, a bunch of uh, mix-ins. The big thing that you're seeing here is that we can alter the number of tests. Sorry, uh, the, uh, the, the test that must, must pass. Quite often, if you've got some of these automated laws because they're randomly generating a whole bunch of things, they can take a long time to run, and it puts people off from using them. My suggestion really and truly is, is do use them. But if it's annoying you, just, just whack that number down to something very, very small. And you can do that during development. So if during development, you, you don't want to just be running these big tests all the time, just pick a number of 20 or something, just, just, just to make sure you, you haven't made anything drastically bad as you're going along. Once you want to do a, a final release or something, then, then whack it up. But, but please remember, if, if the future is actually doing this at compile time, something like what the, the Idris does, please don't put this off to the last minute. Okay, the sooner, the sooner that you can start using these tests, the sooner you'll see the issues that we're just about to look at. Um, the other thing here, which uh, is an approximate equal, I said earlier that, 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 that double is an uh, associative. One way of fudging it, is just to say, well, rather than having pure equality, we'll, we'll have equality uh, within a certain um, constraint. Quite often, for your own projects, that's good enough. Again, if you're going to release it for the whole world, um, it's a bit too hacky, um, but it's a nice workaround. So here's an example of a physical unit. I'm not saying it's uh, production ready, it's just a simple example. So I've got a case class of a kilogram that accepts a, a double, and we can add it together. I've added a, a commutative semi-group uh, instance, so we can now um, uh, use the, the, the semi-group. And you can see in this test here, I've got the double gen, I'm, I'm, I'm creating the arbitrary values, um, I've created an approximate equal uh, instance. So that's the important thing uh, halfway down. That's the thing that's going to do the test. Um, the check hall, that is the, the key one. That's the discipline um, command. So that will run all the commutative semigroup tests for a kilogram. Um, that passes. You'll have to trust me. I've then got a regular Scala check that's using a small double. It's not using a big range. That passes without any problem. Uh, here's the same again, but I'm, I'm passing in a different EQ instance. Here it's just doing a straight equals equals, and that fails. However, the other tests still pass. So the, the point here is everything looks fine. Everything looks like you've got a, a really good working uh, uh, class until you run the, loyal, uh, the laws. That, that's actually when it fails. You don't know otherwise. Um, and for the final example, pretty much the same again, but I have a kilometer rather than a kilo. Here I've actually put the, uh, the implicit semi-group uh, directly in the class. Here's the twist. Here I'm using a rational. That comes from Spire. And the Spire rational is uh, exact. It's a lot slower than double, but it is exact. 
Okay, uh, you've got to pick. There are uh, other Spire um, uh, classes that are quicker but harder to use. Like you've got to do more boilerplate. Um, there are also some double equivalents that are, are pretty close performance wise uh, that will help you out. So what we have here is, is the same. We have some uh, semi-groups, but this time for a rational. Um, and then in the tests, exactly the same. The, 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 the actual gen rational, I pulled that out from, from Spire. If you look at the Spire laws, it's, it's done for you. You don't have to worry about it. Um, what they're doing here is you can't test generate all rationals because we'll be here forever. Infinity will take quite a long time. So here they're just doing it for each long because in, 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 in the world of doubles, uh, we've got longs are always catered for. Um, so the code's pretty similar. Here I've just got x equals. There's, there's no fudging with approximations. And here with the, the commutative semigroup tests, the laws uh, method at the very bottom, that's actually from um, catalysts. So it's just doing some type checking rather than using a string to say what the actual um, name of the test is. We, we're just using a class. And that passes. And this is, this is cool because if you look at the names, k kilometer is almost correct. Kilometer is not always almost correct. And it's, you, you've got to think something's wrong. Okay, if, if you're having to call your tests, the, the, these, some of these, they failed last night when I was doing the coding, and today they passed. So th these aren't using the rationals, by the way. So just to, to finish off, uh, the main point here, the biggest problems I found with, with implementing laws is there's the boilerplate, how do I actually get it in there? followed by the, t the laws fail. And this is a case of please don't blame the messenger. Right? The laws are good, it, it's the code that's wrong. To actually, you know, a surprise, the point of getting it in early, if you, if you do these tests very early on in development, you've got a chance of, of doing th things like using Spire uh, 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 mass types. They are slower, but you don't have to use it for everything. Okay, when, when it's, it's fast, uh, or fast enough, you can use them. If you do have a certain area where you must use double, it doesn't matter, you can still wrap, wrap a, a rational around it. So as far as the rest of the world concerned, it's rational. Underneath, you can use arrays, you, you can use doubles, you, you can fire away. Early on in development, that's easy to do. If you suddenly add this and you're going live next Friday, you've got no chance. So just to finish off, the, the takeaway I think today is, Please use laws, You're not for my benefit, but for yours. Use them early, and if you do use doubles, please start looking at Spire Maths. There's, there's a lot in there, please start looking at it, because doubles don't work. Okay.